by loop. Well, this is one example. Now, in this example, do I know the length of the string? Do I know it? The answer is no. So, when I'm not sure of the number of iterations I must go for, I'm going to use while loop. Now, if the length of the string is already known, then I don't have any Hello, sir. So <clears throat> what basically happens is I make use of a while loop when I'm not sure of the number of iterations I want to have. So in this case, the initial value of length is zero and uh, every time uh, str of length is not equal to null, I increment the value of length variable, length plus plus. So uh, if the string is, for example, uh, good, g-o-o-d, G -O -O -D, then uh, the length of string is going to be four. But please remember, at the fifth location, I still have a null character. That is very important. But that is never counted as a part of string. I mean, in terms of finding its uh, length. So this important thing you should uh, understand. So as I told you, uh, the standard C library, string.h, gives us a lot of uh, uh, flexibility in terms of using all these uh, library functions. Okay. A quotation, sir. Uh, can you can you mute your mic? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, can you mute your mic? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> let us try to find the the length of the string. Let's try to uh, look at this example and then understand it. Now, it doesn't make use of any pointers. So, what I have done is uh, I start with void main and then character string of uh, of fifty. Then we have integer i length equal to zero. So you can make use of either len or length or any other variable. Now it's very important for you to initialize it. That's that's one thing you should remember. Then I'm asking you for a string. Then I make use of get yes, uh, um, you know, function. Or else you can also make use of f get yes because that's a much more safer option. Then what I do is I make use of a simple for loop. So I initialize i equal to zero. And the terminating condition is string of i not equal to null character. Till that time, you keep on having i plus plus. And uh, if the condition is true, which condition? String of i not equal to null. I keep on making use of uh, incrementing the value of length. So when I encounter null character, I come out of for loop and I display the length of the string. So you can just try to cross verify. Please note, if the string is something like uh, good, G-O-O-D, the length is just four. It is not five. So please don't include any null character which occurs at the end of the string. Now, <clears throat> let's try to see with this particular background, let's try to understand how we can uh, get to know about pointers and strings. One simple example I have illustrated here, we say char star strptr. Strptr means it's a it's a string which is initialized to uh, a string like hello, h-e-l-l-o. So <clears throat> what this means is uh, inside of memory, inside of memory, which is indicated as a horizontal set of locations, I want to store the ASCII value of h, let's say at location uh, 5000, ASCII value of E at 5001, ASCII value of L at 5002, it just goes on. So if you look at it, H, E, L, L, O. Now these five bytes are stored, correct? But along with that, there is also a null character stored. So you don't expect me to put an explicit backslash zero over here as a part of a string. No, it's not required. The opening and closing double quotes themselves identify the limits of a string. Now, when I say something like char star str ptr string pointer is equal to hello, then uh, what actually happens is str ptr is basically a pointer variable. It stores the starting address of the string. That's very important. str ptr stores the starting address of the string. In this case, the starting address chosen by the OS is 5000. So 5000 is stored here. 5000 is stored. But please note, the strptr itself has also some address, correct? 
Now, in this case, uh, the operating system has chosen an address 8000 for the purpose of allocating memory for STRPTR. So that's how STRPTR, which is a pointer, character pointer, now starts pointing to uh, a string in memory, which is hello. Please note, such strings are called string literals. I repeat, they are called string literals. It's also possible for you to have one more string, uh, one more uh, pointer, let's say T, being initialized to uh, the first starting address of this particular string. So this slide shows that it's not, uh, uh, I mean, it's perfectly okay for you to initialize the same string with the help of different pointers. But when you want to initialize, when you want to manipulate these pointers, you must be uh, very, very careful. So very quickly, let's try to go through a simple example and then understand uh, how we can actually uh, get to know about this. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to my um, online compiler. Let us try to uh, do some kind of simple manipulation. Um, I'm going to say char star str is equal to, let's say, uh, good. This is my string, okay? <clears throat> this is the string we want to have. And then I just want to display it on the screen. So how to do this? Can I make use of printf statement? If it is so, then what kind of format specifier I'm going to have? Shall we say percentage? Yes. Let's try this. And then followed by str. And then we have a semicolon. Let us try to see how this particular uh, program behaves. I simply say run and the output is the string itself. Good. Well, I think you understand the basic difference now. I can make use of an array of characters. In that case, I would have told you like char, str, uh, square bracket and some number that's equal to good. And then for the purpose of uh, manipulating it, I must be able to index into each and every uh, location and then manipulate. Or else, if I say char star str, uh, what it means is str is a pointer of type char. I hope you remember from yesterday's discussion that we always start reading from right hand side to left hand side. Okay, so um, it just means that I look at str as a pointer which can point to character type. So <clears throat> in memory, I know str is pointing to the uh, string which is uh, uh, good. Now, let's say uh, I just want to uh, make a little bit of change. I just want to explore uh, some aspects of um, you know, using uh, pointers and strings. So let's say uh, I just want to change the contents to uh, from good to hood, for example. That means I just want to replace G with H. So uh, what do I say now? Can I say something like star str uh, equal to uh, H? Look at this. I want to have, instead of good, I want to have hood. So after this, I want to uh, display the newly manipulated uh, String. So we have percentage yes, of course uh, inside double quotes, uh, followed by str. So that's what we want to do here. Okay. So uh, what do you expect the output as in this case? Anyone? Chat box. So initially the string is good. Now I want to convert it. That means I just have to replace the first character from G to <coughs> H, so that it becomes hood. That's my expectation. So what do you expect out of this program? Please uh, reply in the chat box. Okay, Lakshmi says error. What about others? Yes. Okay, why shall I say index and we have h error, only h gets printed, <coughs> so on and so forth. Let's try to run this and see. It says segmentation fault. Segmentation fault. Um, why this happens? Now, I was expecting uh, the output as good and good, but this is not actually happening. Let's try to answer this question almost at the end of 
today's session. But please remember that the moment you initialize such strings, the so-called string literals, you are not able to change the content of this literal. This is one thing you should uh, remember. Why that happens? I will try to answer at the end of this session. So <clears throat> coming back to the next important aspect of uh, pointers and strings, let us try to display the string using pointers. Mm. In this case, I have declared char star str ptr as hello and then I'm going to have char star t equal to str ptr and then using a simple while loop I'm going to get the Now what I do is I just try to uh, uh, have this particular piece of uh, program uh, getting replicated there for you to see the output. Let's see how it behaves. So we have char star str as good and then we have uh, one more character uh, pointer as let's say t okay just like what we have been showing here and it is now initialized to uh, the first pointer and then we have to print the output here so i just have a small modifications to be done so i must set up a simple while loop so we have while uh, uh, star t is not equal to uh, null character then what I do is I just try to uh, print it and then increment the value. So we have print percentage C, uh, the content of T, and then I must be able to uh, increment the value of uh, T by saying T++. So if you look at it, T++ is something that we have discussed in the context of uh, uh, pointer arithmetic. So t plus plus means t is equal to t plus one. So that's perfectly okay. Okay, and then, um, yeah, this is uh, not required because I'm trying to already display the contents here. So this is a program uh, we want to have. Let's try to run this and then see what happens. Okay, now this output called good is because of this while loop. Do you now understand? Is it clear? Okay, the output is now good because look at this. When I say uh, str is pointing to a string literal called good in memory, I say char star t equal to str. That means uh, star t is now initialized to the same pointer. That means star t is also pointing to the same string like what I had shown you earlier. Now using a while loop, why do I use a while loop? Because I don't know the length of the string. I repeat, I don't know the length of the string. So what I do is, initially T is pointing to the first uh, character. The first character is G. So when I say star T, it means content of T, right? So content of T is G. So is it not equal to null? Yes, it is not equal to null. So this condition is true. So what I do is I enter inside and print that character. So the output is going to be G on the screen. Next, I say T++. So T++ will actually uh, move the pointer T from let's say location 5000 to 5001. So is content of star T or is the second character, is it not equal to null? In this case, it is not equal to null. It is actually equal to O. So since this condition is true, I enter inside the loop and print that character. And hence I get the output as O. So I have G O. Then I increment T and then this continues until I reach null character. So in the fifth iteration, uh, star T or content of T is actually equal to none, right? So this condition fails. So I simply come out of the loop and hence the output is, is good. So this is how we can initialize uh, uh, strings using pointers and we can access them. Is it clear? Any questions so far? Please let me know in the chat box. Are you getting uh, these discussions? Are you with me? Any response? Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's try to uh, look at one more important aspect regarding uh, pointers and strings. Let's try to continue our journey. Let us try to understand the basic difference between char 
uh, EMSG of 15, which is equal to invalid choice, and CAR star ERR message, which is equal to invalid choice. Now, you might feel that both are exactly the same, but please note, both are not exactly the same. The first one is an array of characters. The first one is an array of characters. The second one is not an array of characters. It is a character pointer. I repeat, it is character pointer, which is pointing to some message. It's called error message. And the message is invalid choice. So in the first case, 15 locations are reserved for you to store any content, any message. But in the second case, depending on what I write here, uh, look, memory is allocated, but ERR message, this since is a pointer, starts pointing to the starting address of I. That's very important. In the first case, E message does not start pointing to the address of I. Why? Because simply it's not a pointer. In the second case, error message, ERR message, starts pointing to the first character of this particular message, that is I. So both of them are very, very different. Let us try to look at finding the string length. Now, this is the pointer version. Pointer version. Now, uh, I'm just trying to write uh, how string length is implemented. Uh, string length is a function to which I'm going to pass a character star as input. So the value of n is going to get me the length of the string. So by making use of a simple for loop where n is initialized to zero until star s not equal to null s plus plus. I keep on incrementing the pointer s and then I look at the incrementing uh, of value of n because this is going to get me the output. So if you compare this program with previously discussed uh, string length program, previously we did not have any notion of character pointers uh, here with respect to characters, but here now we are talking of uh, uh, star s. So that's very, very important uh, difference, okay? Then <clears throat> let's also look at a simple string compare program with no pointers. So if you analyze this program, we have string one of size five and string two of size five. And then we have declared some variables for the purpose of uh, monitoring the values of i and temp. Now we <clears throat> prompt the user for entering first string and we get it. So you can make use of either get s function or f get s function. Okay? Uh, because get s function, as I told you, is, is not uh, very nice. It says there's a warning. It's a dangerous function to use. So go for f get s. Then we have printf enter the string to value and we get the second string as well. So the meaning of string compare is that if the first string is, let's say, good, G-O-O-D, the second string is also supposed to be good, G-O-O-D. If there is any one character difference, then the strings are not, not the same. So I perform this operation using a simple for loop. In fact, while loop can also be used. But if you choose to go for for loop, the initial value of i is zero. The terminating condition is very important. The terminating condition is very important because um, you must perform this comparison until you encounter null character, correct? But in which string? Is it in string one or string two? We simply don't know. Because let's see, the first string can be high, hi. Is it okay? The second string can be good, g-o-o-d. So do I perform this operation four times or two times? Obviously, there is no point in comparing these two strings four times, right? In four iterations. So that is why the terminating condition is supposed to be written in such a way that when you encounter a first string's null character or second string's null character, you should simply stop. I repeat, first string's null character when you encounter or second string's uh, you know null character when you encounter, you must be able to stop. Now, if both of them are, let's say, uh, not equal to null, then you just keep on uh, continuing the operation. So inside the body of for loop, we say, if string one of i is not equal to string two of i, we have the value of uh, temp as one, and then we simply break. So if the value of temp equal to zero, when is it zero? Initially. So if temp is equal to zero, it means both the strings are same. Otherwise, both the strings are not the same because there is at least one character which differs. So this is the string compare program without any pointers. Well, let's look at 
string copy program using pointers. So <clears throat> the implementation of str cpy uh, function is going to be like this. There are two parameters I must pass, char star s and char star t. It's the source string and this is the target string or first string and second string. So inside the body, I uh, make use of int i equal to zero. And then we will have while, why while? Because I still don't know how many iterations I require for the purpose of copying uh, string two into string one. So while something is not equal to null, what is that something? Now look at this condition. This is very important for you to understand. Uh, we say yes of i equal to t of i. We are not saying double equal to. We are not actually after comparison operation. So what this does is it looks at second string or t string. In the first iteration, the value of i is equal to zero. So t of zero is copied onto s of zero. This is an assignment operator. So uh, if the second string is something like uh, like a good, so first g is copied from t string into s string. So since it is copied, this character copied is not equal to null, right? So if this is not equal to null, then I'm going to increment the value of i. So i is now one. So t of one is let's say o, because I assume that the string is good, g o o d. So o gets copied. Now, since it is character o, and since it is not equal to null, I enter inside the body of uh, while loop and increment it. The same thing continues until you actually you know, uh, encounter null character. So this is a very simple implementation of string copy. Obviously, you can understand here that character pointers are being used. Now, there is also one more version of string copy. What is it like? Please look at the difference between previous program and this program. The previous program is, I say character star s, character star t, and using the array index notation, s of i, t of i, I keep on copying the contents until I encounter null character. But in second version, v2, uh, I still make use of while loop itself, but I say star s and star t. The logic remains the same. So star t initially consists of g, as value of g. So g gets copied, and since g is not equal to null, since g is not equal to null, I just have to enter into the body of uh, while loop. So yes gets incremented, pointer t also gets incremented. That means t is now pointing to character o. So once again, uh, o gets assigned to content of yes, which is not equal to null. So this loop is entered once again, and then I increment yes and t. So the second o of g o o d good gets copied, and in the next iteration d also gets copied. The moment I encounter null character, I simply stop. That's very important. So uh, there is no need of uh, monitoring an extra variable like i here as the first version. In the second version, I just eliminate it. I make use of pointer arithmetic, pointer manipulation for the purpose of copying uh, uh, string two into string one. Well. Further modifications are possible. Let's look at next version. This is version three. Now the length of uh, this program has further reduced. You can observe it here. Just for your reference, I'm going to just go back by one slide and then show you how these things are done. In second version, V2, we have star s equal to star t. That's not equal to null. So s plus plus t plus plus. This is what we say. This is what we do, right? Now in the third version, uh, we don't even uh, try to write yes plus plus within the body of while loop. I simply say star yes plus plus equal to star t plus plus. Now, if this is not equal to null. So the way in which this works is, let's say, initially the content of t, that is star t, is g, right? Because the string uh, that we have assumed is good, g o o d. So content of t is g that gets copied into content of yes now since the content copied is not equal to you know null i just have to keep on uh, executing the body of while loop now uh, unfortunately there is no body of while loop because there is a semicolon at the end so what it means is uh, 
whatever condition that I have put here for the purpose of checking for truthfulness, that itself is going to take me further. Now, star t plus plus means post increment of star t. This is what we have seen. Okay, so t now gets incremented. I repeat, it is not the content of t, but the pointer t, the pointer t which gets incremented. So t is now pointing to next character which is o. So that gets copied, and yes is also incremented. So the same uh, you know sequence of steps repeat for g o o d until we encounter a null character. So when we encounter null character, we just have to quit the loop. So this is a very very highly optimized way of uh, performing a string copy. So just uh, understand here from first version v1 where we made use of extra character and array notation, we move on to v2 where the pointers are used. and pointer arithmetic is used for the purpose of optimizing the code and then we move on to v3 where the body of while loop itself is eliminated and we are able to perform string copy very comfortably now this code uh, seems like a little cryptic this is not very intuitive so please don't get confused like if i say star t plus plus uh, is it going to increment the content or address let there be no doubt When I say star t plus plus, it is always t which gets incremented and not the content. Well, this is quite understandable because we know the uh, uh, operators. Plus plus is a unary operator, correct? It's not a binary operator. It's a unary operator which takes only one argument. In this case, the argument is star t. So plus plus operator has associativity from right to left. Okay, so when I say associativity to from right to left, uh, from right to left, when I come here, it is uh, variable t, the pointer variable t. So t gets incremented. Okay, but when it is time for assignment, it is always star t, which gets assigned to star s. So from that perspective, uh, you must be able to understand that star t plus plus increments the pointer t. star s plus plus increments the pointer s and the contents are not incremented okay that's very very crucial so this is how we perform string copy operations um is there any doubt as such any doubt Okay. If there are no doubts, then I'm going to quickly move on to the two-day array of strings. Uh, since we have a limited amount of time, let me just try to uh, quickly move on and then discuss about uh, one or two important aspects. So, if you look at two-day array of strings, it is indicated like this. Uh, for example, character city of four comma twelve is equal to Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, and uh, New Delhi, so on and so forth. So, the way in which it gets stored is as follows. City of four comma twelve means that I have four rows of twelve columns each. I repeat, four rows of twelve columns each. So the first city's name is Chennai. So at this location, the ASCII value of C is stored. Here, ASCII value of H is stored, and so on and so forth. So when I uh, finish with C H E N N A I Chennai, I know that at the end, a null character is placed now after that when i start with kolkata we don't think that it starts at uh, location uh, number 8 in zero throw no because the syntax 4.12 means that every time i have a new initialization new string it must start from a fresh row so that is why here the ascii value of k is stored ascii value of o is stored and it just goes on and then we also have a null character at the end Moving on to third <coughs> string, Mumbai. Mumbai is stored as shown here, and then we have New Delhi. New Delhi has a uh, one blank space here, but that's okay. Blank space is also a character, uh, nevertheless, so that gets stored. At the end, we have blank space. I mean, null character here. So, if you look at this scheme of things, what do you observe? You observe that there is a lot of wastage of memory. For example, one, two, three, four. Now, these four bytes in the first row. Cannot be used. Similarly, these five 
uh, you know locations in the second row cannot be used third row cannot be used so <coughs> while it is okay to make use of 2d array of uh, strings for the purpose of simplicity it's quite possible for you to go for a 2d array i just missed one uh, important thing a 2d array of uh, pointers so in that case you would say something like character star city of uh, uh, 12 that's quite possible so that would mean that you have a pointer pointed to the starting address of string 1 then string 2 string 3 string 4 so on and so forth so it's possible for us to have a pointer to a 2d array of strings or a 3d array of strings or n d array of strings so that's very uh, much possible i also have to talk about the const qualifier in this context please uh, try to pay attention um uh, when i say char star declaration there are two aspects first thing is i make use of a pointer or i make use of a string okay so char star means the pointer is mutable what is the meaning of pointer uh, being uh, mutable that means you can change it you can change it string is also mutable when you say const char star the pointer is changeable or mutable but string is immutable next if you say char star const the pointer is immutable that means you cannot change it it, it is just like a read only kind of a pointer but the string is mutable if you say const char star const both of them are uh, immutable they you cannot change it so the const keyword it's called const qualifier it's going to change the very way in which pointers and strings they behave you must be able to remember this particular slide then let's have a very quick quiz and then uh, we will wind up for a day what is the difference between uh, single quote a and double quote a anyone single quote a and double quote a answers in the chat box single quote a and double quote a <coughs> okay yes anusha says it a uh, single quote a implies it's a it's a character correct it's a character uh, it means we are referring to the ascii value of it ascii value of character a in this case but if you look at double quote a it means that it is a string can you tell me what is the length of this string answers what is the length of the string i repeat what is the length of this string which i am trying to type in the comment box chat box <clears throat> uh sujata no the length of this string is still just one why because there is only one character here which is that character a so it is not two or three it is just uh, one that's very crucial so you must be able to understand that single quote a corresponds to you know um, ascii value of a character double quote a corresponds to a string a next <clears throat> what is the output of this int main uh, character star str str equal to gfg and star str plus 1 equal to n any answers is it clear so character star str it means str is a pointer of type character then we have str equal to gfg the string itself is gfg and then we have star str plus 1 equal to n what i'm trying to do here is um instead of having a, a f here in its place i just want to have a n so that the string becomes g n g so what's going to happen in this case so there is a question here um so then what about uh, null character well uh, in the context of uh, string a 
you mean anusha well in the context of string a the null character a is going to be there but the length of string is still one why because there is only one character i repeat the length of the string is still one because there is only one character there is going to be a null character at the end but that is not counted as a part of length of string okay so coming back to this question what will happen in this particular case star str plus 1 is equal to n i want to change the contents from gfg to gng what is the output expected answers any answers so will the string get changed to g and g or no answer is no that's right prithi that's right now the question is uh, the same kind of example that we had discussed uh, some time back i told you that i'm going to give the answer to you at the end so this kind of program when executed actually gave rise to segmentation fault so <clears throat> this is happening because such string literals i repeat such string literals they get allocated with some space in the read only part of memory that means i can uh, have a string literal i can uh, initialize a string pointer to it but i cannot change the content of that string so exactly the same case is true when i was talking to you about uh, good g o o d being changed to hood h o o d that is simply not possible because it behaves as if it's a read only string so that is very important for you to understand okay so <clears throat> i think with this uh, very brief introduction to pointers and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, strings i just want to close this discussion in fact uh, uh, we know pointers and strings is such a huge topic such a huge uh, subject which can just be dealt for hours and hours together it just goes on but the point is Uh, this is going to be an initiation for you initialization for you so that you can uh, think on similar lines try some crazy examples practice them and see if you can understand it or not okay so uh, 2d strings 3d strings pointers to 2d strings pointers to 3d strings they can all be uh, possible they are very much possible in the real world okay i guess we have a question here uh, sir but str stores address one minute but str stores address in what context this question is asked uh, amok oh you mean uh, in this example uh, definitely yes str stores the uh, address but this kind of initialization is quite possible <coughs> this kind of initialization is initialization is, is quite possible this is happening because it's an example of uh, initializing a string literal it is an example of initializing the string literal so from that perspective uh, this is quite okay okay so <clears throat> i i want you to understand uh, that uh, uh, you must be uh, practicing these examples that we have quoted in today's discussion these slides will be made available to you uh, the source code will also be given to you so that you can uh, try and then copy these examples in some c compiler and see how it actually a kind of uh, behaves there is one more question i suppose star str plus 1 equal to n please explain this line how it works okay please not star str plus 1 is equal to n this, this line does not work lakshmi it doesn't work this is wrong this is wrong because the moment i declare uh, the pointer str as pointing to gfg string that's it that's it it's a it's a string literal so if you want to
change from f to n and if you want to use this kind of syntax it is simply not possible because this string gfg is allocated with some memory in the read only part of uh, uh, memory we have okay so from that perspective this particular uh, statement does not work it gives error message in fact uh, this is a reason why we got segmentation fault segmentation fault um, when we were discussing about this particular example okay i hope uh, that answers your question lakshmi okay uh, do you have any questions we'll have some one or two minutes time and then we'll wind up any questions so far okay now if you don't have questions then i have a couple of questions for you just to uh, kind of uh, make you think and then uh, practice now if you observe the chat box please observe your chat box um, is it okay for me to say something like this is this okay Okay, we have one more question. Uh, in two D strings, memory gets wasted. How it is reusable? Well, the answer is very simple. It is not reusable, Lakshmi. In two D strings, when memory is getting wasted, it is it is simply not reusable. In fact, uh, uh, when we talk of one D strings also, for example, uh, if you look at your screen, I'm just going to have one uh, uh, a new file just for purposes of uh, typing something here. when you look at uh, one d strings now it can be something like this right i mean it can be uh, let's say integer or whatever int arr if i say and uh, write it like uh, 20 okay are you able to see this okay if i say int arr of 20 then what actually happens is uh, this statement says that i'm trying to reserve 20 uh, units of integers or 20 integers but the point is if i just make use of only two integers in my calculations the remaining 18 into 4 bytes or 8 bytes as the case may be will be simply wasted this is because it's an example of static allocation of memory so that is why we we don't prefer it we don't use it so when this is happening in one d arrays the same thing happens in two d arrays also when this can happen in one uh, d string it can also happen in 2d string so your question is in 2d strings if memory is getting wasted how we can reuse it in 2d strings if you want to reuse memory or if you don't want to have any wastage then what you must do is you must use pointers this is the first solution the second solution is if you don't want to use pointers there is one more way of uh, getting around this you go for dynamic memory allocation and deallocation functions dynamic memory allocation and deallocation functions so these are two examples with help of which you can uh, avoid wastage of memory be it in 1d arrays or 1d strings or 2d arrays or 2d strings okay uh, is the concept clear now okay so uh, what about the answer to the question char star s equal to star t is equal to hello did someone try it online and then uh, are you trying to answer this question okay i have uh, one answer uh, amog says uh, it's not possible okay what about others okay please try to find it please try to find it okay then <clears throat> i also have one more question for you um yeah please see your chat box uh let's say 
if i have something like uh, or else i'll just try to type it here in bigger uh, letters if i have something like uh, this character um a r r of uh, two and not two let's say uh, we'll go with some sizable number uh, what does this mean can somebody help me char a r r of 5 comma 5 can i help you to understand the meaning of this anyone okay row and column you think uh, that's right uh, but basically what it says is array is a 2d sequence of characters correct array is a 2d sequence of characters it is not it is not just a 2d array it's a 2d array of uh, characters or i can say 2d array of strings now i'm just going to make a small change here now so i'm going to say char uh, star a r r of 5 uh, now what do you say this is trying to indicate char star a r r of 5 what is the meaning of second statement its address well uh, no anusha it's a string well what about phi what about star sapna okay we have one more answer from snail who says array of pointer that points to character let's see i'm just going to wait for one more uh, minute any other answers we have it's a 1d array pointer pointing to character okay let's see few more answers is a pointer to an array of five uh, characters okay well <clears throat> please note yeah uh, well please note that first statement and second statement are functionally equivalent first and second statement are functionally equivalent um what does that mean now it means in the first statement i'm trying to have a 2d array 2d array of characters right or 2d array of strings as i call it like chennai kolkata and new delhi that example we have seen now in the second case when i say char star ar of phi it is basically an array of pointers it's an array of uh, pointers now please note that it is not a pointer to array array of pointers and pointer to an array are very very different so if i make use of the same technique of reading from right hand side i start from here this must correspond to an array so there are totally five elements the name of array is arr and it's of type char star so arr of phi is going to be an array of uh, character pointers each and every content is is a pointer over here now if i try to write something like this uh like char uh star arr of let's say phi then this is totally different the third one is very very different i repeat once again third one is character uh, bracket star arr of phi 
Now this is very different because this corresponds to a pointer to an array. Pointer to an array which has five characters. I repeat, the third one corresponds to a pointer. What's the name of pointer? Star arr or arr itself. That's very important. So this corresponds to a pointer which can point to five characters. But the second one and first one they are functionally equivalent. The third one is very very different. Okay. So please try to differentiate between second one and third one. Second one and third one. Second one says that I have pointers to different arrays. There are different pointers here. But in the third case, there is just only one pointer. The name of pointer is star arr. But there are five characters which can be pointed with the help of this particular and uh, such distinction. Please keep on practicing and then uh, let us know if there are any doubts as such. Okay. Do we have any further question here? Please put it in comment box or chat box. You can also uh, post your queries in the uh, pointers in C WhatsApp group that is created for the same purpose. I also sincerely hope that uh, you have gone through the uh, assignment uh, day two questions given to you, uh, which were posted in the WhatsApp group. So please try to practice them and see uh, if you can get the output. In the process, if there are any doubts, once again, you're always welcome. Okay. So if there are no any uh, further questions, then I'm going to uh, stop for the day. Uh, I think we need to have some five minutes break also. And then I think uh, Professor Shrikansar will continue with the most likely questions, most favored questions from placement activities. Now it's going to cover uh, questions which have been asked by different companies uh, to students and uh, the answers for each one of them along with the discussion. Okay, So thank you very much. Uh, students, thank you so much for your uh, active interaction. Uh, it's been nice uh, talking to you on pointers and uh, strings. Thank you very much. What do you, Shrikant? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, students, uh, we'll take a break of five minutes. Yeah. And uh, we will join back at 11.45 sharp. So I, uh, I think uh, we need not leave the meeting. We need not leave the Google Meet. So just uh, you keep it as it is. Take a five minutes break and uh, come back. We will we'll start it. Thank you. 